Hey there once again YouTube. Uh, first off, I want to let you know that I am making a video about spectrogram plots today. I've had a lot of viewers come out and say that it doesn't make sense what some people are saying about spectrograms. So, I'm going to set the record straight, get rid of the misinformation, and tell you the real information about spectrogram plots in my next video after this. Just want to get this video out to you to tell you that there is a magnitude 5.4. Supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth off the coast of Oregon. Let's zoom in here and see if there's any aftershocks being reported. Let's see here. There are no aftershocks, but there was a foreshock. Notice there's a magnitude 2.74 shock to the magnitude 5.4. Both striking at 10 kilometers in depth, but that is likely because they could not constrain the depth correctly. Let's go to the event page, shall we? Okay. Magnitude 5.4, only 9 people reported feeling it likely on the coast, right in this area of Oregon right there. Here's the moment tensor, very, very, very strange looking moment tensor for this earthquake right here. Let's see, let's go to origin, see what the closest seismic station is. Just want to take a quick look at it in the seismic program swarm. Remember, I am putting out a video later tonight or tomorrow morning about the spectrogram plots. Guys, so keep an eye out for that for all my viewers that have been wondering about spectrogram plots. Just check either tonight or tomorrow morning. Check my channel. Let's see, the closest station is Keb in the NC network. Let's use that right now. Here we have Keb in the NC network. Broadband vertical. No location code, so it'd be dash dash. Going to do one hertz high pass filter to the eighth power. Let's go forward. Okay, whoops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Here's the magnitude 5.4, looking pretty strong, guys. Pretty, pretty strong. Very interesting because it almost looks like there are multiple PNS wave arrivals, which could have to do with multiple aftershocks, maybe. And so let's go to the spectrogram plot to see if we could separate any of these. Remember, there's no such thing as spectrogram data. There's only one thing called uh, seismic data. You can view it via the web recorder here via the seismogram plot, spectrogram plot, or spectra plot. It's all the same thing. It's all seismic data and records ground motion, frequency of the ground motion, but the plots can view it in different ways. And no, has nothing to do with depth at all. It makes no sense because sometimes there could be high frequency, deep earthquakes, and sometimes there could be low frequency, shallow earthquakes. But we'll get into that into the next video. Check this out though. Look at how long this event lasted. Look at this leading right up to it. Are these earthquakes or are these just surface events near the station? Possible P and S wave arrivals. Those look like earthquakes in my opinion. Look at that. Says maybe, maybe. I don't know there actually. I don't know for sure. But again, we saw a magnitude 5.4 off the coast of Oregon along the Blanco Fracture Zone, just west of the Cascadia Subduction Zone. That's that right there. See if there's any aftershocks. Something strange going on here. Have no idea what this could be. Very, very odd. Remember the Blanco Fracture Zone in the late 90s supposedly saw a volcanic eruption along that Blanco Fracture Zone area. So this area is potentially volcanic. Don't know what the heck that is really, but... So that's pretty much it for that. Let's go see if it showed up at the stations at Yellowstone. Here you have MCID's Webby Quarter, part of the Yellowstone Seismograph stations. There, Yellowstone called there, National Park. Notice we see it right here, most likely. Let's see, it occurred at, let's see, 1433. This occurred at 1459. Okay, so that's not it. Let's go back. Whoops. Okay. So 59, so it'd be this one right here. So let's go check that out in the seismic program swarm. And by the way, guys, I got the times wrong. I got the times wrong. I was wrong. I was right at first. This is it right here. Because it said 1459, right? Well, 1459 would be right about here. It takes a few minutes to travel to Yellowstone, so that would be right there. Remember, Webby quarters are read from left to right like a book. So that's not it right there, but this is right here. Here we have station MCID in the WI network, 01 location code, short period vertical, scrolling down. We see this event right here. There's a local earthquake, local or regional, maybe Soda Springs, Idaho, or up in Montana, or up in Yellowstone, but right here we see the signature from the magnitude 5.4 off the coast of Oregon, which definitely should have shown on this station, and it did.
And yesterday, actually, down in California, swar uh, slight swarming and aftershock activity continues in the coastal volcanic field and the Ridgecrest area along that fault that saw the 6.4 and 7.1 on July 5th and July uh, 4th as well. Let's go to largest magnitude first. Yesterday, there's a 4.3 all the way up here near San Francisco, west southwest of Bryan, California, at 4.3 at 12.4 kilometers in depth. That was at 2011 UTC on the 16th. Then at 2015 UTC on the 16th, only a few minutes later, boom, there was a 4.5 at 3.6 kilometers in depth along this fracture zone down here that was created by the magnitude 7.1. I believe the fault did breach the surface. Very interesting right there. So 4.3 North San Francisco, 4.5 down here. We're going to take a look at the 4.3 near San Francisco from the closest seismic station. Again, it is at 12.4 kilometers in depth. See how many people reported it. 10,863 people were portofilia. Okay, so a lot of people felt it. Only slight to moderate shaking. Nothing too, too crazy. But uh, over 10,000 people reported it, which means more people likely felt it because not everybody reports to the USGS. Let's go to origin, phases, arrival time. We're going to use CMOB in the NC network. Here we have CMOB in the NC network. Now let's scoot forward. Now right here you'll see the magnitude 4.3 at 12.4 kilometers in depth near San Francisco. Now remember, color range is not magma, guys, because a lot of people say, oh, that shows magma. If it's red, it's got to be magma. Well, this could be freaking purple. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, color has nothing to do with magma on spectrogram plots. Here you want me to show you. Power range DB. Instead of 110 as the max, let's set 160 as the max. Boom! Power range goes down. But the, it does not change the actual power range of the amplitudes over here. See, above the 10E5 right there. Let's go back down to 110. Still saying 10E5. It's just showing, just in case if activity is too strong, you can change the power range of the color on here. Remember, red is the strongest, blue is the weakest. That is the range of a spectrogram plot. Here's the 4.3 that we saw a very tiny aftershock right there. And a few minutes later, we see the signature from the magnitude 4.5 in Ridgecrest, California, coming in right there. Then we see another aftershock in the San Francisco area right here. I believe it was a 3.5. Another one, maybe mid-range 2. And then we see a 4.5. Wait a second. What was it? My bad, guys. Let me go back. 4.4 near Coso Junction, right up there on the Coso Volcanic Field. They had a 4.4. Here's the signature from that as well. So activity continues in California, guys. Fours are popping off here and there. You know, activity seems to be dying down here in Monroe, Washington. So hopefully no major quake is coming. Hopefully they were aftershocks and not foreshocks. Remember, because I did feel an earthquake a few days ago. So hopefully everything stays okay. Hope you guys have a great day. Keep an eye out for that coming spectrogram video. God bless and have a wonderful day. See you later, guys.